Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Yuta Nagashima of Tokyo Construction. Uh, before I start my presentation, please allow me to introduce myself. Uh, I have started my career in Tokyo Construction in 2006 as a civil engineer and was transferred to the current international division from one of the domestic divisions in 2009. So although I'm still in my late 30s, I'm working overseas on international projects for over 13 years. For the past few years, I'm in charge of various international tenders and currently focusing on one of the projects in the Philippines. While I'm making my presentation today from Manila. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce the project I was involved in. Now I'd like to start my presentation. Uh, here's the overview of the project. The project name is Construction of Jakarta Mass Rapid Transit Project CP101 and CP102 located in the Republic of Indonesia. Tokyo Construction formed a joint operation as a leading member with a local partner, PT Vijay Korea. We were awarded the CP101 and 102 contracts in October 2013. The employer was PT Mass Rapid Transit Jakarta, known as the PT MRT Jakarta. The engineer was Jakarta MRT Construction Management Consultant, which was led by Oriental Consultant Global as their leading firm. The project was funded by JICA, adopting special terms for economic partnership known as the STEP. The contract was design-built contract using Fit Book 1999 as the general conditions of contract. Scope of work was design and construction of the depot, including building facilities and workshop equipment, elevated structure, a mainly viaduct, uh, stations, including structural, civil, architectural, and MEP works, and testing commissioning. The project commenced on 26 November 2013 and was completed and taken over by the employer on 27th March 2019. Here's the overview of social environmental consideration of the project. Jakarta is the nation's capital and the largest city in Southeast Asia. The city is the center of economy, culture, and politics of the country. The rapid growth of population in the urban area is a significant threat to the sustainable development of the country. Even though the transportation network in Jakarta, such as highways, bus lines, and railways have been gradually constructed, the infrastructure development did not catch up with the increasing transportation demand with even worse traffic jam in the central business district, resulting in an increase in economic and social cost measured in terms of growing travel time, air pollution, and lost economic activities. In order to alleviate the heavy traffic congestion by enhancing the transportation capacity, Jakarta MRT, funded by the Japanese ODA loan, was launched as the first metro project in the country. It was also the first all-Japan urban railway system project in Southeast Asia. Phase one of the project was the construction of 50.7 kilometer segment connecting Lubakburus in southern Jakarta and Bundirahai in central Jakarta. Currently, phase two, which is the northern extension of phase one, is under construction, also using the JICA fund. As mentioned earlier, we Tokyo Wika joint operation has completed two packages, CP101 and 102, which was the elevated section and southern part of the project alignment. Here are some of the key features of the project. Out of our 5.9 kilometer of elevated structures, most parts were constructed using precast segmental box girder using the span by span method. 16 precast box girder segments were erected one by one using the self-launching gantry and were post-tensioned using an external tendon to be bonded as a 40 meter span viaduct. 148 spans of viaduct were erected using this method. We also constructed a three spans continuous long span bridge with a total length of 174.5 meter. The balanced cantilever method was adopted. The construction of this bridge was extremely challenging due to two major aspects. The first issue was that the bridge had to be erected over the live busy highway without closing the road. A precise work sequence and safety measures were planned 
and execute it every day to ensure the highest safety possible. And no incident had happened during the construction. The second issue was that the bridge had a very sharp curve radius of 182 meters. This is close to the lower limit you can apply for a railway track curve radius. Due to this sharp curve, the three-dimensional displacement, the twisting movement of the bridge had to be considered and calculated before the concrete casting of each segment. With strong support from our head office engineering team, we were able to complete the bridge within the required accuracy and quality. The other elevated structures were the stations. We have constructed three elevated stations, Rubakburu Station, Hotmati Station, and Chiptere Station. We also constructed the depot. The total area of the depot is 8.3 hectare. 300,000 square meter of soil was used to form the embankment of the area. The building facilities include workshop, inspection shed, administration building, and other maintenance and operation facilities. We also purchased and installed workshop equipment, as you can see on the lower right picture. Now I would like to introduce one of the Japanese pioneering engineering adopted in this project. 3R method was adopted to construct the retaining wall structure, closing the perimeter of the depot. 3RB method is a method to construct reinforced soil structure using geogrid and rigid concrete facing, which is widely used in road and railway projects in Japan. The original design was a conventional retaining wall using geogrid and precast concrete panels, but a large portion of this was changed to 3RB method after considering the new seismic code adopted and the distance between the retaining wall and the railway track being too close that the force from the track cannot be sustained by retaining wall of the original design. This method was adopted for the first time in Indonesia. Challenges experienced through the project. In this project, I was assigned as the project control division manager, now mainly looking after quality issues. Improving the quality level of local companies was the most challenging and pivotal for the project's success. The basic design adopting Japanese railway standards had a high quality requirement level that many local companies had never experienced. Many companies hesitated for being supervised under strict quality control requirements. However, through persevered education and regularly done quality inspections and audits, not only did we complete the project successfully, but we were able to contribute to the drastic improvement of the quality level of local companies and the development of the human resources. I have realized that by seeing the recent local projects in Jakarta. I feel that the quality level of the local project is overall increasing after the completion of MRT phase one. So I think this is another contribution we made to society from this project. This is the photo during the opening ceremony. Like all other construction projects, this project also encountered massive problems and challenges. Huge pressures, and sometimes frustration, and many nights I couldn't sleep. But after seeing the excitement of Jakarta's people, seeing smiles on their face for having their first metro ever. I was able to forget all the frustrations, stress, and worries. And I was just very happy and proud to be able to contribute to this country. That's all for my presentation. Uh, finally, I would like to thank all the people who supported us during the course of the project. Our client, PT MRT Jakarta, the government of Indonesia and relevant authorities of Jakarta, all the supports we got from the Japanese government, all the general contractors who complete this project together as a team, including the consultant, our JV staffs, all the subcontractors, suppliers, and people involved in this project, and finally to my family. Thank you very much.